say, there we go. So good evening, everybody. Um, Claire, do you want to just spotlight me again? Brilliant. Um, welcome to our demo this evening. We've got a really ambitious menu plan, so I, I promise I'm not going to talk for too long at the start. We want to get cooking because we've got a lot of things to show you and things that also will take some uh, time to cook. So my name is Lindsay. I have been a Thermomix owner now for um, over three years. I was a customer, first of all, and then I love my machine so much I uh, became an advisor. And that is pretty much the same story for everyone, I believe, that we've got on the call this evening. Um, so if there are any owners out there that are, are thinking, this looks great fun, love to do what you guys do, um, then do talk to one of us, talk to your existing advisor or, or come and talk to one of us on the call um, about how you join um, a, a, as an advisor. Because when you're an owner, it's very easy uh, to, to transfer over to becoming an advisor. And, and what better to get paid for sharing your love and passion for Thermomix, which you will already have as an owner, um, and basically get, get paid for eating uh, delicious food and socialising with your friends. Um, so my background is a trained chef. I said I'd never have one of these machines. Um, and I think that's really important to sort of get that across at the start because we find when we talk to a lot of people that they'll say, oh, the Thermomix isn't for me because I love to cook or oh, the Thermomix isn't for me because I hate cooking. But actually what we tend to find is that your biggest objection to sort of not having a Thermomix is often the very reason that you really need one. So for me, for example, I said I didn't need a Thermomix because I love to cook. I love to cook from first principles. What I didn't realize was actually having this thing would uh, make me cook even more. So I could just get even more done um, and I could do it with consistent uh, results. I used to wind myself up something chronic in the kitchen when I was trying to make a hollandaise and it was all going horribly wrong and I just couldn't temp temperature control the water bath. And my hollandaise would always split. I once went through about 20 eggs. I don't have that problem anymore. I just shove it all in, click start, and eight minutes later, I've got a perfect hollandaise, leaving my hands free to focus on something else that I would rather be doing um, so uh, it also appeals to people who hate cooking because actually it's a bit like having a chef in the kitchen uh, doing all the work for them people that don't have time um, we have Michelin starred chefs in kitchens all across the globe using this machine because there is simply no better piece of kitchen equipment and hopefully tonight you are going to see the true versatility of it um, so if you are here as just having a look you're curious um, and you're thinking that, you know, you, you'd quite like to buy one of these. Um, I'm just going to give you the price information to start with. And then we'll talk a little bit about that as we go along. So if the, the cost of the Thermomix is uh, £1,149. I'm really sorry. I can't do anything about the price. But hopefully you'll see why it is that much. Because it does the uh, function of about 25 different appliances. And really, if you added up the cost of buying and investing in all those different appliances, it would actually cost you more money than buying a Thermomix. But we all know as, uh, as owners and all our customers will tell you um, that you save way more than it costs to buy um, when you have a Thermomix in your kitchen and you're using it, not even to like 10% of its full potential. It is incredible. And this month, we are giving you a bit of help to become an owner because we have our incredible interest-free offer back. Um, so you can buy a Thermomix um, on an interest-free basis over one, two, and get this three years now. We've never done three years before in the UK. Um, uh, completely interest-free. So you can spread the cost over 12, 24, or 36 months. On a 12-month plan, it's just under £100 a month. Uh, on a 24-month plan, it's about £55 a month. And on the 36-month plan, um, it is uh, around about £32 a month. Now, for a pound a day, you really, really can't get a better investment in the kitchen. And we, we see all the time that our customers, owners and fellow advisors will save twice, three times, four times what the Thermomix would cost them to buy on a daily, ongoing basis. So, you know, the cost for me, it's, everybody, it's generally everybody's biggest objection to start with. But hopefully, as we go along this evening, we talk a little bit about the cost you'll see why that really shouldn't be an issue for you. And you will save way more than it costs to buy. Not only that, this, this month, so they're really pushing the boat out for us because um, it's Thermomix's 50th birthday this year. So Thermomix has been around for 50 years. We've got that pedigree behind us. 
Um, and for our 50th birthday, we've been doing some fabulous offers the last couple of months. And we've also got an offer on the sous vide bundle um, this month, which you can buy for half price. So when I come a little bit later on, I'm going to demonstrate a, a couple of sous vide techniques. So I'll talk through the bundle in more detail. Um, but it is £79 this month when you purchase the Thermomix. Let me just stop my friend. It is and it is my friend, not I haven't got actually a little friend with me, it's my appliance. Um, uh, when, when you buy Thermomix this month, the sous vide bundle uh, can be yours for uh, just £79, which is 50% of the cost when it's released um, on our website uh, to the general public next month. And existing customers, if you want to uh, benefit from a bit of a discount, uh, you can buy it this month for a 20% discount off of our website. But we'll come and talk a little bit about that in more detail um, as we as we go through um, the sous vide cooking part. So I'm going to just show you the machine very, very briefly. We've got three dials on the front. So we've got time, temperature and speed. So all of our recipes are a combination of those three sort of cooking processes. And when you think about it, when you cook generally, it really is just about how long you cook something for, what sort of temperature and how often you have to sort of give it a stir. Luckily with, with the Thermomix, you don't ever have to give it a stir because it does that for you. So it means you can be a lot more hands-free. Um, okay, so I've got time, temperature, speed. Then if I swipe across, I've got all my functions. So I'm not gonna go into these in much detail. I'm just gonna gloss over them. So one of the best things about um, the Thermomix is it's got inbuilt scales. So you'll see this on a recipe. You can, uh, you don't have to have a separate set of weighing scales. You can just weigh everything in and it really does speed the process up. Mm. We've got a sort of a bread making mode or a dough mode. Uh, we've got a, a, a turbo, which is a bit like a pulse on a food processor. It's self cleaning. Mm. That is the best thing ever. Mm. Blender, you can boil your eggs in it. Um, is there somebody off mute if you could just ensure you're all muted please because I just get a little bit of feedback in my ear you can boil your eggs in it um, and with the egg boiler you can actually determine how you want your yolks so whether you want them really soft medium soft medium medium hard or firm and it will do that to the precise to to, to the you know the, cl the closest sort of second really um, and they're always perfect you can use it as a kettle. So brilliant if you're traveling around, you don't need to take lots of bits of kitchen equipment with you. You can warm up your leftovers, you can thicken sauces, soups and gravies. Um, you can use it as a rice cooker. You can ferment yogurt in it. And we've got the lovely Sarah Cutty um, doing uh, the yogurt a bit later on. And you can use it as a slow cooker and sous vide, which actually we don't often do in demonstrations, but I'm just gonna do a very cup, a quick couple of sous vide dishes with you this evening. So there are functions. Um, what really sets this, this uh, appliance apart is the fact, I nearly said machine there, Claire, and you would have told me, of, apparently we're not allowed to say machine anymore. We have to always call it a Thermomix. But um, I get completely tongue-tied when I say Thermomix multiple times in a sentence. So I'm going to have to find some new and innovative ways of, <laughs> of calling it by a different name. So the thing that really sets this Thermomix apart um, is that the fact that through this screen, we've got direct access to about 70,000 recipes. Um, and uh, you can search directly for a recipe on the screen. I'm not gonna show you that just now. I want to show you my recipes. So on here, I have created through my recipe app, um, which is called Cookie Do, I have created folders of recipes. Um, so these are recipes that you can store all together so you can organize them. You always know where they are. So we've, we've got our own sort of created collections on here. So you can see some of my collections that I've created. So if I wanted to tap on the bread one, for example, it's thinking about it, it's because the Wi-Fi is a new upstairs. Here we go, I've got all these lovely recipes available to me at the click of a button. And all I've got to do is just press on the recipe. Here, here's the overview. I can have a look down at what I need to get ready to hand and, and what the method is doing. And then I can just press start cooking and off I go. I just click through the recipe. So that, that is really useful to have that at the touch of a button. I've also got collections that Thermomix put together. So these are sort of recipe books that Thermomix produce. These are all available on Cookie Do as well. And you can save them all to your Cookie Do account, which means that you have got direct access to them through the screen. 
So again, I mean, you can see there's 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 collections for everything. This is a lovely one, um, the, the Christmas collection in the run up to Christmas. If we just have a quick look through that, there's some absolutely fabulous recipes on here. Um, and I've done a lot of them. That soup, the celeriac, hazelnut and truffle is delicious. Cheese straws, fantastic. In fact, we must do cheese straws at a demo again. They're so easy, really quick, really delicious. Ideally, if you've got people dropping around and you just want something to give them, um, they take about five minutes to make um, and 10 minutes in the oven. And, the, and then the, the chicken liver parfait, which is a Thermomix classic, which we have done on demos before. Um, so th this is sort of a, a whirlwind guide to cookie do. You have got, as I mentioned, direct access. You can search through our recipe platform directly on the screen. So if you just wanted to search for something, say, containing, I don't know, somebody give me an ingredient, not too random. Somebody shout something out or put it in the chat. Broccoli. Broccoli. Okay. So let's put in broccoli here. So. You would choose one that I've got to question myself over the spelling now. So we, you, you can see it's found 224 results um, with broccoli and that will be in the title. You can then search in a slightly different way. So you can just scroll down and have a look at some of these sort of recipes that are coming up. Um, if you wanted to use it as an ingredient, you can just scroll down into your filters and, and search for ingredients. So this is this is quite um, a useful one if you've just got some ingredients in your store cupboard or your fridge that you want to use up. You can pop them into your ingredient search, a bit like you would perhaps do on the BBC Good we've Food got database. Got a raised hand, Lindsay. I'm just going to me. Uh, it's me, Pauline. The broccoli. Oh, hi, Pauline. Very nice. Yeah, ah. yeah, it's delicious, isn't it? Yeah, the yeah, top broccoli that's, salad. That's, that's a really good one, and it's something that you wouldn't usually think of doing with broccoli making a salad. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. And that's one of the reasons I bought my first demo mix because I went to a demo and they did this salad and I just thought, oh, do you know what? I'm not really a massive fan of broccoli. I wasn't really mm. sure about having it raw, but then I had it in a salad and I was blown away by it. So we always yeah. do it at demos now. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so that just gives you sort of an idea of, of how you can search. You can search both directly on the screen and then through the recipe app which is available on your tablet um, or in a computer or on your phone you can have your one cookie do account linked to as many mobile dev or devices as you like um, just through one account and you can create your own sort of folders for your children um, or anybody in the household um, I'm sure um, one of Marie's dogs has probably got her own folder on there and Michaela's um, just uh, <laughs> with all the beautiful creations that you make for your doggies. So yeah, you can uh, name and create any sort of folder that you like. Um, so I think that's probably about it. And we've got a recently cooked history, which is also really handy. Um, the recently cooked is available. Um, you don't have to be on Wi-Fi actually. So if you're gonna travel with your, um, your Thermomix, then uh, it, it's a good idea just to put your recipes into your recent history and then you've always got them to hand. You don't need to be connected to Wi-Fi. Um, but of course you can hotspot off your phone as well. So again, if you're traveling and you're out and about, you can connect your, um, uh, your, your Thermomix to your phone um, and use it like you would normally do if you were on Wi-Fi. So that is a whirlwind guide to the Thermomix. We're going to talk about the accessories that come with it as and when we do the recipes, because you're going to see quite a lot of them. We're going to use the Varoma in particular, um, but it's nearly five to eight already and we want to get cooking. So we, I'm going to hand over immediately to um, Linda, who is going to kick us off with a beautiful caramel latte. And just quickly, over Lindsay, to... can, I just, can I just add, make yep. sure everybody puts any questions that they've got in the chat and I'll put the links to all the recipes in the chat. So don't forget to use it. Thank you. Yep. Brilliant. Right. OK, so um, I'm, I'm just letting my thermomix warm up here um, and get to my recipes. So my creative collections here um, are on here. So I um, need to just find out where it is. But um, what I what I did um, earlier, um, I actually made um, the toffee, um, the toffee things that go 
um, into the caramel um, through the cookie dough and um, I created these yesterday so um, that I could um, make sure that I put everything there. So I'm just going to click on to um, caramel uh, recipe and uh, start cooking. So um, in, in my Thermomix here now, I have already put um, seven of uh, these into, um, into the bowl and, and also a half an ounce of uh, whole milk. Um, and then it's asking me to put my um, measuring cup on, which I've done. And this will then, um, it comes up with um, two minutes, uh, 195, and I turn the dial to speed two. And basically that is heating up the caramel um, for the latte to go over the top. Now I did some costings on um, the actual la caramel latte. And I don't know whether many of you, one, lots of people will go to um, a certain store and uh, buy their um, caramel latte, probably costing them something like three pounds, three pound fifty. Ish. And the rest. Um, the yeah. one. Um, and um, I've worked this out that actually by making my own caramel and uh, working out the cost of the coffee, it actually works out at less than a pound, uh, even making my own caramel. So there's so many savings and different things that can be done by actually making your own latte. And I made this yesterday and it was absolutely delicious. In fact, I like, I could have drunk more and more of it, but um, we're on 50 seconds now and it's heating up the caramel for the first stage of the we'll latte. Just, we'll, we'll just go over to Michaela while it, it's heating up and then she can start the main course. Yeah. Bye, Cam <laughs> you all did sorry that's specifically to all our motorhomes out there so i'm cooking a dish that you can do in your motorhome all those that go winter camping and i know we've got non-motorhome owners so you can do this in your kitchen as well you don't have to go to the expensive point a motorhome as well so i'm gonna do a garlic tomato and beef um with potato with mashed potato and carrots and it's a one pot dish effectively now at the beginning of this, it asked me to put the Varoma on, on here. So this is the Varoma, our top hat. So it's got little holes underneath. I asked me to put it in here and weigh in the potatoes. So I weighed in potatoes. I'm using a bit of mixture of sweet potatoes because that's just what my dietary requirement likes. I don't like to have too much of the standard starch. And then it told me to weigh out the carrots. So I've done that. Oh, hello. I've just knocked my camera. I've done that. And also then it even the instructions on the screen, which Lindsay showed you, you can't see on my machine, even tells me to set that Varoma to one side. So then I'm coming on to the actual beef stew effectively. It's saying add two cloves of garlic um, and 100 grams of onions. Uh, 30 grams of olive oil. So again, this, as you can see, imagine this, you're on the road, on the open road, you've got your inverter, only needs a six amp inversion. And I'm weighing in, sorry for those people who aren't motor homeowners, um, 30 grams, I'm weighing directly in here. And Michaela, do you good. want to just explain that? Because I should have said that at the, the start, actually, why we have come up with this menu from the motorhome show that we were at in Lincoln. Um, we were recently at the Moto Show in Lincoln and we had some of you lovely people who all registered. Some of you have become owners already and some of you uh, we've invited along to get a bit more of a feel because we did some demonstrations. So, so yeah, this, whilst you're not all motor homeowners, a lot of you tonight have come and been directed through um, the demonstrations and the show that we did there. So 
So the menu, we've tried to make sure we've got some dishes in there that we can actually do in, the, in a motorhome and showing you how we can reduce carrying extra um, kitchen you know, kettles and pots and pans that rattle in your machine and also how you can make amazing restaurant quality food in your motorhome out in the middle of the field. So now it's telling me to put the lid on and it's going to chop everything in literally just five seconds. So if I just do this, Let me show you this. I love this. I'm going to make Claire laugh. No more stinky fingers chopping garlic and onions anymore. Look at that bad boy. Five seconds. Oh, my, I think my camera's a bit drunk. Not me for once. Then it's asking me to put in, again, weighing out um, 400 grams of chopped tomatoes. I press next and it's asking me to put, so look, even telling me that herbs to add one dry the um, dried bay leaf and then we're going to put the bowl on i'm just going to give that a stir because it's just come up the side a little bit and we'll press next and then there we go we are going to saute that just keep struggling we're going to saute that for five minutes on 120 and literally i'm just going to turn that to stir so if i was on campsite now i'd probably go outside sit in my deck chair and look at the lovely night sky. Back to Linda. Okay. So um, I've melted um, now my caramel. So you can see it's um, it's all lovely and melted now. So what it's asking me to do now is to um, put seven of my caramel candies. Chocolate. Are you eating one by any chance, Linda? I did. It was lovely. <laughs> really nice. So but you're really seven... impressed with yourself, aren't you? Oh, that you've um, yeah, made your own caramel. Yeah, absolutely. So I put seven um, soft caramel candies in. Um, I now need to put in uh, 12 ounces of whole milk. So we're now going in with the whole milk. A little bit more. Oh, just a little bit over. And then I'll go next. Eight ounces of um, brewed espresso. Um, this is just um, some coffee that you can either make in advance and cool. Um, so we're now going in with eight ounces of espresso. Nearly there. It's all going on on the chat, isn't it, ladies? <laughs> Claire so, and Michaela are having their own conversation together about vegetable right, stuff. That's, good. Taste there. that's really good. <laughs> so now um, it's asking me to um, put the measuring cup um, and the lid back on. So I go next. And I basically now I turn that through and it's going to warm caramel the milk and the coffee um to start the um the latte so um that is now um i'm not sure how quite how long that's going to take but um i did it yesterday. We'll, come, we'll come back we'll come back to michaela i think you're you've got the next have you is that taking five minutes michaela or not quite yep. no worries okay yeah so how are you getting on over I've with got, the beef stew, Michaela? You've got a couple of minutes two, to go. I've got two minutes yet. Fine. Couple of minutes. I don't know. Okay, so do you want to come back to me and I'll, I'll start some bread dough? Okay, so right, brilliant. So I'm going to show you how really easy it is to make your own um, bread dough. Um, the recipe I selected um, for this evening was basic bread rolls. So I'm just going to come back. And go into my week. So this is, a, again, a great feature of Cookie Do is that you can set your own weekly planner up. So if I just click on my week like that, these are some of the options that we were, we were going to um, do this evening. And if I'm, I'm just going to select my um, bread roll recipe like that and then click start cooking. Now, I'm going to go a little bit off piece um, here because I'm actually going to use my own um, recipe. But uh, That's following unusual. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> following, following a cookie do method. 
Uh, my recipe for this will be on the Thermomix Whiz customer group, but I'm sure Claire will note it down in the chat if, as we go along. Um, I've just got it handily scribbled down on a little post-it note in front of me so I don't forget the quantities when I halve things because I'm, I'm great at halving things and then just halving some things and not halving everything. So I've got it all written down so don't make a mistake. Um, but yeah, the weekly planet is again a fantastic feature um, and, and a great cost-saving feature of Cookie Do. So through the app, you can go along, find your recipes, set, set out what you want to cook for the day, for the week, for the month, if you like. Um, so you've got it all scheduled. It will then appear on your Cookie Do screen as you've just seen. But once it's on your weekly planner, you can also transfer the recipes over to a shopping list. Um, and so, and when it's on a shopping list, you can then um, integrate that with your online shopping provider. You can add, amend, edit any of the ingredients, swap them if you want, if you want an on-brand version versus a branded version. And then you can compare the prices against the grocery providers. And once you're happy, um, you can then sync, sync it with your online booking slot and it will be delivered direct to your door. So not only does the Thermomix help you with all the sort of the planning and the menu organization and the inspiration, it will also do your shopping for you um, it will cook for you and then it will wash up afterwards. So it'll put you under pressure, like, Lindsay. Oh, what am I doing? I, I, I've got so to get I'm on with my bread. Yeah. Right, I'm yeah, okay, fine. Right. <laughs> so it's asking me for some, um, some some wheat grains. The reason it's asking me for wheat grains um, is that it's going to grind them into flour. Now I am looking around for my flour, which I have got here. I thought I'd got picked it up. Um, it, it wants to grind it into flour. I'm not, I'm just gonna go straight to good old fashioned flour. So it's our, our, I'm going to put in a couple of hundred grams of flour. Weigh that straight in like that. And then um, it also will try and heat up the water and mix it with yeast. But I'm just going to completely ignore that and go straight in with my water, which I did have weighed out behind here. So I'm going to put in, I'm going to put my scales on. Ah, come back, go out of my scales. Um, and weigh, can you see as I weigh in 125 grams of water, it's going to count up. Oh, a little bit more. There we go, perfect. Um, I'm going to put in, because this is um, the fast action dried yeast, so you don't actually need to activate it in water beforehand. I'm just going to put in a teaspoon of, um, of the yeast. So the usual rule is about 2% of flour weight you have 2% yeast, 2% um, uh, sugar and 2% salt. You don't have to um, put all the salt in, um, all the sugar indeed, you can leave that out. So I'm just gonna pop in a little bit of salt, sugar and yeast, and then some olive oil as well, uh, which is here. So I'm gonna put in 15 grams of olive oil, just make sure my scales are reset to zero. Weigh in 15 grams. You could use some melted butter there if you wanted to. Um, so that's super easy. All my dough ingredients are in there. And all I've got to do now, now if I was following the recipe, I'll just click through here. Um, it sort of just tells you what to do. Add your, your, your water and your yeast, and then it's gonna heat it all up for you to body temperature. And add your olive oil, add your flour, add some salt, add your wheat flour. And now it's going to mix that all together. I'm just gonna completely ignore that part um, and just go straight to the kneading bit. Now I need to just take my measuring cup out of there because I seem to have lost the measuring cup this evening. So that's gonna go in. Um, and all I've got here is my uh, dough, dough mode, dough function has come on. Um, it's set for two minutes. I'm just going to knead it like that. So, uh, Michaela, shall I just shoot back to you very quickly so you can get on with the next stage of the shoot and then I'll do the shaping of the dough. God, my camera's playing about today. So, um, yeah, there we go, guys. There's some sautéed onions with tomatoes. And again, if you wanted to stop right there and just add some pasta, you've got a fabulous pasta dish right there. But anyway, it's now asking me to add the beef, um, the meat. And again, um, it's the scales, which you can't see on mine because of my camera view, it's going to weigh this in. now. I am reducing ingredients a little bit tonight because we're a family of three. So um, again, another functionality of the Thermomix is it will tell you how many portions. And I have to say, for someone who had no idea about portion control, um, we put a lot of weight on before I became a Thermomix uh, 
customer and now you know lost loads of weight because we're eating the right portion size <laughs> so, so the next thing is saying add 50 grams of uh, red wine obviously i hadn't opened this wine earlier and started drinking it just left a little bit in the bottle michaela <laughs> <laughs> and we're asking to put some water in there 50 grams of water obviously as i said because i'm reducing the amount of food i've got in there i am reducing it as i go along and then one of the things that claire mentioned in the chat there we hate waste as thermomix owners and it's a challenge between us advisors and owners how much more money we can save and how do we get to zero food waste so this is my homemade meat stock it's not beef one it's a chicken one but it's made from the basis of my veg peelings that i put in a bag and keep in the fridge until i need some more and then i make a veg stock in here veg bit of water and wine and salt it's free. It would have gone into landfill um, otherwise, all those fed shocks. So I have this. It stays in my fridge for about six months. Well, it doesn't actually. I use so much of it, but it will last up there. So it's asking me to put in one teaspoon, um, a pinch. And then this is another thing. It Even for those that can't cook, it's telling you about seasoning. Those that can cook and you know your own taste buds, you can add and take away in this seasoning as you see fit. This is two spectrums tonight, but Lindsay and Maria, professional chefs, right? They are doing this everyday life. I'm not, I'm a working mum, I have a full-time corporate job and I am knocking out these amazing meals. So now it's telling me it's going to cook um it's going to cook that uh, for 10 minutes so i'll put that on oh just one other point right so it doesn't cut up the meat it's putting that blade on reverse but it's doing it automatically because i'm following a guided recipe so i'll put this on it's going to cook away for 10 minutes and are we going over to linda go to linda is your latte finished we are all right okay so um i've now got 30 seconds it's asking me to do the next step which is um 30 seconds here of uh, so it will froth, froth up um as you would get in a um normal um normal store so you can hear it's a bit noisy because it is now propping up the coffee in order to make it exactly the same as you would buy in Starbucks or um, one of the other stores um, for a, you know, for a latte coffee. So um, we're done. So here we go. So we'll now go next. So what it's doing, what it's saying to me now is, and you can see in here, hopefully, oh, oh. Um, sorry, is the um, froth on the coffee. So I'm now going to pour this into my glass jar here. So you're going to get the froth on the top. And then I will add some whipped cream, which I um, whipped up earlier in the Thermomix. And I'm gonna put a dollop on the top. I gotta try this. I gotta try this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant actually that Lindy, you actually made the toffee as well. Cause again, that just shows another mode and feature of the Thermomix. I know you were not doing it tonight, but there's not actually an awful lot to see when you make sugar, uh, when, when you do sugar work. Cause it just boils away, doesn't it? All you do is add the ingredients in, set sugar stages to caramel um, or toffee. Um, it boils away and then you just sort of pour it out and it sets, in a pan and cut it up and there you go your own toffee and then i'm putting the uh caramel on the top so you have got a really good perfect um latte caramel oh, wow. latte with the froth with the cream and the caramel and believe you me i tried this yesterday uh, on a you know a, a demo run and it absolutely tastes delicious. You so, haven't stopped drinking okay. them since. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, my job done.
I hope that's decaffeinated coffee in there this evening, otherwise you'll be bouncing off the walls, Linda. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's come back to me very quickly because I'll show you the bread dough. Okay. Um, so, but I, I think the wrong, um, have you spotlighted the wrong camera, um, Claire? Yeah, there we go. I, yeah, I did. Sorry, it wasn't okay. Claire. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, okay, so here's my bread dough. You can see it needed in two minutes just from those um, ingredients. So really basic ingredients. It's so easy when you have a Thermomix to make your own dough. Um, you've got to shape it afterwards. So it's not, it's not like a bread maker where it will um, sort of, you add all the ingredients in, then it kneads and then it bakes for you without you doing anything. You do still have to get a little bit hands-on. I love that because it means you're still in control of it, but it's so, so easy to work with this dough. So you can make anything from your own tortilla wraps. You can make rolls. So we're gonna be making rolls tonight. Very similar dough to a, a sort of a basic white farmhouse loaf. Um, again, so um, you, you've seen how easy that is. Actually the farmhouse loaf, you don't have to shape it at all. You just pour it into a tin and then you ferment it in the Varoma for 30 minutes and pop it in the oven. So it makes it really, really super easy. So that has just kneaded. I'm just gonna put that to one side. This one um, kneaded earlier and has proved. So it's lovely and puffy. All I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to shape the rolls. Um, we're gonna prove them and we're gonna bake them this evening. So this will make about four. So I tend to do a dough weight of about 85 to 90 grams per roll, which is what this will give me. So I'm just gonna cut it into four pieces really easily. So all this is, is this dough left to prove for an hour or so. Um, and then, so once I've got my pieces of dough, I'm going to just sort of come round the clock with them. So this is quite key. Some people find that they get quite soft, like flat. <laughs> Claire's going to say something very rude in a minute on the chat. Flat baps. <laughs> but I like my baps a little bit perkier. So um, I'm just going to go, I find sort of doing this action, which is actually sort of called round the clock. When I was taught to make bread initially many years ago, this is what the lady that did my course taught me. Come round the clock. Like that, so you pull out and pull back into the center and then flip it over and you've got, and you'll notice I've got no flour down on my work surface. I've just got a little bit of olive oil and that's because you, you need the tension to shape your roll. You can't have loads of flour because you won't be able to actually shape your roll. So I'm gonna just shape my roll by using a sort of a claw hand. So come underneath it like that gradually bring it into the center and there we go. So that can go just straight onto a baking mat. And then I'll just show you another one quickly. So I'll go around like this, in fact, I'll do two at a time so we can get them all done. And you can see how really quick and easy it is. The dough is lovely and easy to work with, um, which is always the case when you follow Thermomix recipes or you use my recipes. Um, and so I'm just gonna do it using two hands takes a bit of practice. Don't ask me to like twiddle my leg at the same time in a different direction because that will get me all sorts a, of there's confused. A, there's a theme from Karate Kid here, isn't there, for those that are old enough? Wax on, yeah. wax off. <laughs> yeah, and there we go. So last one. So really, this is a matter of kind of a couple of minutes being able to do this. So then they get put onto a baking sheet. Now I quite like them to batch bake, so I sort of put them quite close to each other. Um, and then, all I've got here is a little bit of greased cling film. That goes over the top. Bit of greased cling film over the top. They, and I'm just gonna pop them into a very, very low oven now. We're gonna force proof these so that they prove within about 15, 20 minutes, hopefully. I'm gonna pop them into a low oven at about 50 degrees and force proof them before I bake them uh, for about 15 minutes. So that's, that's all that's involved in making bread. It's so delicious. You know exactly what's in it when you make it um, from scratch. And it is a fraction of the cost of buying it. So I make all our own sourdough. Artisan loaves on the market in the town where I live cost, will cost you between sort of three and five pounds a loaf. I can make my own sourdough for 22p a loaf. That's quite a saving if you're going to buy a couple of them a week. Um, add in wraps. I make my own tortilla wraps now. Um, in fact, my children won't even uh, eat the wraps that come out of a plastic packet because they just say they taste like cardboard. Um, and when you've made your own tortilla, it's so, so easy. It couldn't be easy. I must do it at a demo. But there's lots of lives in my group showing, showing you the process. 
Um, bread is an absolute joy, a pleasure, and very, very easy to make in, in a Thermomix. So that's uh, me done with for the time being. You'll be relieved to know. And we're going to go back to, I think we're going to go back to Michaela, are we? No, or I've got we, two um, minutes. Hey, I've got, I've got two, two minutes. Okay, yeah. so let's go over to Marie. Yay. Another chef. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, Marie here. So like Lindsay was just saying to you, um, I bake bread probably twice a week in, uh, using my Thermomix and I haven't had shop-bought bread in the house now. Uh, it'll be two years in November. So just imagine the amount of savings that I've made um, by making my own instead. And I guarantee you every time it's so much tastier. Not making bread tonight though. We are here to make something else extremely tasty. Uh, we are making sticky toffee puddings. And as Michaela mentioned earlier on, um, we, are, we have got most homeowners um, watching us this evening. And this, believe it or not, you can make sticky toffee pudding, sticky toffee sauce, custard as well, absolutely on the road if needs be. All you need is your electric hookup. That's it, you're away. So there's nothing uh, that needs to be done outside of the Thermomix of this recipe, which is just amazing. So. I'll bring you down to the Thermomix so you can see the, I'm not allowed to say machine, you can see the TM6 instead of me um, and see what's going on. So we've got the recipe up on screen. I know you can't see the screen particularly well, but what it's asked me to do already is to um, soak some dates in water and bicarb, which I have done there already. So they're all ready to go. Just going to bring us through to the right amount it tells you all the amounts and it tells you what it does is it heats the water up as it goes along so um you put in then pouring the hot water over the dates and the bicarb and that bubbles up and you then leave them to soak for about 20 minutes uh, it also gives you instructions to grease your molds which i've already done in advance um i've just got some little dariol molds here that i'm using tonight so they're all good to go so we'll get uh the recipe up on screen uh, the stage that we need it at there we go so it's now telling me to add in the reserved dates with all the soaking water so that's the whole bowl just going in the top there uh, simply click on next for your next ingredients butter unsalted and cut into pieces it's really specific as to what it needs from you. Um, I think it was Michaela was saying earlier on, you do not have to be a chef in any way, shape or form to use this machine. But the beautiful thing about it is it's so versatile, trained chefs can use it as well as complete um, novices in the kitchen. So it has something that's uh, available for everybody to use. Um, add in 110 grams of brown sugar. So that's just going in there. And again, the beauty is that the scales are there. So you're just weighing straight into um, the, the machine itself. And sorry, I said machine. Um, and um, you've not got to do the extra washing up. Obviously, we've got a few extra bowls. You'd normally be weighing straight out of bags and boxes into there. 150 grams of flour, super, super quick and easy. 150 grams of flour going in that, it's just plain flour. And then it just wants half a teaspoon of baking powder. So get that in there. Half a teaspoon of baking powder in. And one large egg. So take my egg and drop that in there. Again, all straight into the bowl, not making any additional washing up that we don't need. And simply then uh, insert the lid onto the top and press next and it's going to tell you it wants to try, mix for 20 seconds there's no speed necessary and it tells you what for, uh, what speed to take it to which is speed five in this instance so in just 20 seconds that's going to mix that mixture up for us and you'll get a really lovely light batter and the, these i've done these Sticky toffee puddings lots of times. They are one of my other half absolute favourites. So he's very happy that I've uh, pulled this straw tonight. Um, so the, the thing about it is that the batter is never, ever dry. It's never heavy. It's always extremely light. Um, and um, because it's steamed in the Veroma, which is what we're going to do next, we're going to get out and steaming, um, it is just beautiful light and tender so that's the batter all made and ready to go and I'm just going to bring you back down to the table and we'll just pop a couple into the molds 
And I'm just going to do something here. This is a tip that I put on uh, my page quite recently. If you just put your lid over the top of the mould here, it's just the right size for it. But also, if you're ever using doing gum or um, chutneys or anything, it helps you fill the jar up. And if you make a mess, the worst thing that's going to happen is it goes on the lid, which you've already used anyway. So it acts as a funnel to help you get that uh, mixture in place. So there we go, nice and easy, perfectly filled. And no additional mess anywhere. So we'll carry on like that. And I'm actually just going to move them over. When I've done them all, filled them all up there, um, you'll see um, we've got the friends here. Um, I'll try and pull you a little bit closer so you can actually see the screen on the friend. What we're going to do is we're going to get the friend, which is our companion piece. Let me turn you around, actually, that'd be easier. Yeah. Maybe not. Gone off screen altogether now, sorry. Right, okay, not to worry. Um, I don't know if you can see the screen there. I don't think it's going to pick it up, I'm afraid. No, but again, you've got the same thing. You've got uh, time, you've got um, temperature, and you've got um, the speed that it needs to go at. So we're just going to put it on for 20 minutes. And it's going to go on the high speed, which is Veroma, um, which um, is our steaming mode. And in the meantime, I'm going to get on with the sticky toffee sauce. So we've got them steaming away at the same point in time as we're going to be making the sticky toffee sauce. So I'll move that over. And we'll take this. You mind if I just quickly um, show my one step? Marie, just so no, that on, yeah, that. Yeah. But is that right? idea, Michaela. Yeah. Yeah. Just an, it's just an explanation. So I've already started. So again, this is what we're trying to show you about this one pot machine. The next instructions, which it started, whilst it's really cooking that amazing casserole, it's asked me to place those potatoes and carrots on top and now it's steaming. So that's cooking away for 20 minutes. Again, I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to carry on watching my amazing peers carry on cooking. So back to Marie. Thank you very much. Hello again. Right. So now we're going to do the sticky toffee sauce to go with those puddings. OK, so simply here, it wants some more butter. It wants 60 grams of butter going in this time. So literally pop that into the top there, 60 grams straight in. And then I think it wants some more. Yeah, some more soft brown sugar. Um, 60 grams of that as well. Again, just all thrown straight into the bowl. Um, and then the next it wants golden syrup. Golden syrup, that's what it wants. Right, so 75 grams. So the thing as well about um, your liquids here is that your liquids are measured out in grams in exactly the same way. So you've not got to measure everything out into a jug, first of all, and then add it in, again, saving that washing element. And when you've got a machine that can wash itself as well at the end of the day, that's uh, a bonus if this is the only thing that's got to be washed is uh, your TM6 and then it washes itself. That's a win-win. So uh, 40 grams of milk. Pull that in, I think that's about right. 33, 39. There we go. Perfect. Okie dokie. And what's the next step on there? Uh, oh, a little bit of vanilla extract. Yeah. So a little bit of vanilla extract in there. Perfect. That is all your ingredients in. That's all we've got to do. Pop the lid on, pop the measuring cup in, and then turn that for, it's going to cook for seven minutes at 100 degrees um, on speed two. Simply turn the dial, walk away and leave that. That's seven minutes. Seven minutes, my butterscotch sauce is going to be uh, ready to go. Uh, in 20 minutes, my, uh, my uh, puddings will all be steamed as well. So that's all from me for the moment. Um, oh, right. Back, yeah, I think we're going to go over to actually Cutty with her Nutella. Hi. Her Hi, speciality. Guys. Right, I am actually going to use my own recipe on here. It is in fact one that somebody put on the Thermix Facebook group. So I am going to, I've already roasted my hazelnuts and actually you can roast them with the um, skins on and then you just have to rub them in a tea towel to get all the skins off but I've actually just bought blanche ones, but I still um, roasted them just for eight minutes, about 180, just to get that flavor out. Right, so I am going to grind my nuts for 20 seconds. This is uh, yeah, 120 grams of hazelnuts. 20 seconds. 
That's B10. So this is going to, oh, gosh, hang on. Sorry. I've been sitting down too long. All right, speed 10. recipe and um, I love doing it and it's one of the things that attracted me to the Thermomix because with all these cupboard fillers you just don't need all these additives and preservatives and it's the palm oil you know you don't need any palm oil um, in this recipe it is just hazelnuts chocolate of course so I'm going to now add 100 grams of milk chocolate weighed these out previously but it will obviously you can use the scales throughout this recipe as well and um 100 grams of dark chocolate i'd already done it just to um speed things up a bit All right now i'm going to grind that for 25 seconds at speed 10. again so that's going to blitz the chocolate make condensed milk in the thermomix. Um, I'm just going to actually I'm just going to scrape down the sides. Oh chocolate. Yes we actually ran out this morning so this is perfect timing. And it lasts in the fridge for well it doesn't last very long because they eat it but it does last a while. A few weeks. Here's my here's my one. I eat it by the spoonful. <laughs> I only made that a couple of weeks ago, but it's just like a nut butter with a bit of chocolate, isn't it? So uh, right. <laughs> that's my excuse anyway, and I'm sticking to it. And then you just heat that basically uh, for eight minutes, um, eight minutes at 60 degrees. So now I'm just twiddling the middle bit and then at speed two. And that's it. So the condensed milk, yeah, all it is is butter, water, a bit of sugar, milk powder, and that's it. And you can make that and um, it's in the fridge for two weeks, but I haven't, obviously, cheated. And um, it is a lot cheaper but making this Nutella than actually um, than buying it. And I'm going to, if we get time, I'm going to make the brioche roll. I might just use some take the brioche um, the star bread. But I'll see how we get on. Yeah, that'll be really interesting to see, actually. Okay, thanks, um, Sarah. Yeah, and it's so easy and quick to make all your own nut butters, isn't it? Um, I make cashew nut butter, almond butter. You can, of course, make peanut butter. You just simply roast the nuts or toast the nuts in the oven. You can actually toast them in the thermix as well and then grind them. You don't have to use extra oils and everything is palm oil free as well. So um, again, it's a, a lot kinder to the environment. Um, so without further ado, we are going to go over to Sue, I believe. Now, Sue Hambleton, who's been patiently waiting. Um, Sue is uh, really interested in health and wellness. Sue was uh, initially a, a customer of mine, actually, and has now become an advisor just because she loves sharing her Thermomix um, with, with other people. And it's just great fun, isn't it, uh, Sue? And um, you were really interested in the Thermomix to cater for your, the dietary requirements of your family. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, so over to you. It's great for me. I'm not, not a chef, just a complete amateur. Um, just trying to cook good, healthy food and cater for gluten-free, dairy-free, all sorts of other options. Um, and what I'm cooking tonight is some oat cakes. Now, I don't know why it's taken me so long, um, because I've made all manner of hummus and dips and all sorts of things since I had my Thermomix, but I've still been buying these, men's oat cakes. I spend a fortune on those because they're a great healthy snack option. However, um, this demo has prompted me to actually make them for myself, and they're fab. 
So I'm going to um, show you, I've actually prepared the dough, um, but I'm going to show you the steps that I went through because it's really, really so simple. So if I can just hold that here, you should hopefully be able to see that screen. Is it going to show you? Uh, hold on. That one. There, just for the light. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, that's so good. I'm actually using this recipe, which is oat cakes with Moroccan hummus. We're not doing the Moroccan hummus today, but um, just to show you the oat cake part of it. Um, so to start off with, we just um, preheat the oven and line a couple of baking sheets um, with baking paper. And then to make the actual dough, um, I've gone through this process of placed um, 30 grams of unsalted butter. Now I've actually used goat's butter because we tolerate goats better than cows in this house. Um, so that's what I've used in there. Um, just popped that in. Um, and then I've added 70 grams of water, half a teaspoon of sea salt, and a tablespoon of raw. Now that says raw sugar, I've used coconut sugar again. So it's very easy to make a few um, switches here to, if you need to um, pop those in. And then as we've put the, um, the, the lid on and um, it then has heated that up and mixed it for um, three minutes. So you can see on the screen there, three minutes at 90 degrees um, on speed three. Um, so it heats that all up and then literally we just add in the oats, that's 180 grams of oats, and I've used gluten-free oats. Um, oats generally don't have gluten in actually, but they do have a risk of contamination, which is why you can buy gluten-free oats that are kind of guaranteed not to have um, any contamination of gluten in them. Um, and I also had um, jumbo oats. So the first batch I made were quite rustic because they were quite big oats, but I've just um, broken them down a little bit for this recipe so that it's not quite so rustic looking. Um, so we added the oats in along with a quarter of a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, um, which again, just sort of added that in there. Um, and then it's literally just mixed it for 10 seconds on speed five. Um, and then we literally transferred it onto a um, place to roll it out. So I'm just going to show you what I've got here now. Positioning that back on there where hopefully you can see. Um, so let me actually see here. Ta -da. Right. So on my um, thermomix baking mat here, I have actually rolled out this dough. Um, you can you see that there? Yeah. Um, so you can probably see this, you can see the texture of the oats in, in, the, um, in the dough, but it's rolled out really easily. Um, it was very warm, which actually helped um, when it came out. Um, and I've just literally popped a sheet of baking paper over the top um, and rolled it out. I'm not an expert roller, actually. It's not one of my things um, that I've been particularly um, good at, but there's some great tips. Um, once on cookie dough and all sorts of things. So we're all, all ready to go. Um, and if I grab my um, sheets here, we literally just need to cut them out and pop them onto this baking tray. So I've just got a little um, cutter here and it's literally a question of kind of cutting those through um, and then popping them onto the baking sheet. Um, you can see there, they're about two can millimetres. You, can you angle thick. your camera down a bit too? Or is oh, that sorry, gonna be yeah. Too, yeah, that'd be really handy is to that, do that, yeah. Is that yeah, better? that's lovely, yeah, yeah. perfect. Um, so literally they're two millimetres um, thick, um, roughly, and I can just spread them out. Um, these are probably, they're a bit on the smaller side than, um, than I, I buy, but they come out beautifully. Um, and if I can just, um, I, I won't make you watch me do all of these, but literally we just kind of pop them onto that sheet there um, and any bits of dough that are left over will easily kind of push back together um, to use up the odd, the odd little bits um, and just space them out onto the baking tray and then we pop them into the oven um, for 12 minutes. Um, and this um, recipe you'll see actually because it guides you all through that on on the actual screen. Um, it tells you how to roll them out to two millimetres um, using a cookie cutter, uh, about five centimetres. And then you bake for 12 to 14 um, minutes in the oven at 190 degrees um, until they're crisp. And then actually what you do is just turn the oven off 
and leave them in the oven um, to, to dry and crisp up um, as they finish, um, finish cooking. So I made the mistake the first time around of, of making sure they were really crisp before, um, before I turned the oven off. And then, of course, because we left them in the warm oven, that probably wasn't necessary. So, so actually, 12 minutes is, is probably good to turn the oven off and leave them there to crisp up. Um, and um, I shall get those in the oven. Um, but I can show you some that I made um, in my practice batch. <laughs> there aren't many left now because we've been eating them away. Um, and they've just come out like that. Um, perfectly crisp and great for all manner of snacks um, in place. So I'll just move that to the side and then I'm going to show you a smoked onion dip, um, which is the next part. Okay. So just to find my next recipe. Um, yeah. So going here to the smoked onion dip and start, oh, you can't see that again, can you? Start cooking. Can you see my screen now? Okay. Um, so for this, again, I've made one or two alterations. Um, I've actually used um, dairy-free cream cheese, for example. Um, and I'm just going to draw a question. Okay. So starting off, um, we've got eight ounces of cream cheese, which is softened because it's been out of the been out of the fridge for a little while. So we're just popping that in there. Okay, we've pretty measured that and read it. There we go. Now this this is a cream cheese that I bought actually a dairy free one, but again there's some great recipes on um, on here, and I've, I've made cashew cream cheese and all sorts of things um, since having this. Um, and then sour cream is going in there. Eight ounces of that. Now clicking on to next. Um, next we've got nutritional yeast. So if you're not familiar with this, this is often used in um, vegetarian recipes, actually. Um, it gives things a kind of a cheesy flavour. So that's, I just buy that in a, in a tub, but it's something that I use quite a lot in our kind of various things. It's like a powder. It's got a sort of salty, cheesy flavour um, and it has got um, B12 in it, which is useful as well. So we're you can use that. it to make um, vegan parmesan, can't you, with cashew nuts? Absolutely. That works yes, really well. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, so an ounce of that. And then I've added some of these dried ingredients together. We've got um, some paprika here, two tablespoons of paprika, um, smoked and hot in there, um, two tablespoons of onion powder. So this is, it's actually called onion granules, what I've got, but there we go. So onion powder. I've also got Tabasco. I haven't measured that out in a second. Um, oh. Sorry, I should have opened this before. I had to dash and get some of this. So one to two teaspoons of Tabasco now to taste. Now this is when I have to make a decision whether I make it for my taste or for my kids, because I always like it very <laughs> hot and spicy. Um, and they are not always so much. So let's just do that. There we go. In there. And then when we do next, we've got the garlic powder. That's already gone in. I've mixed that with the um, onion granules. One and a half teaspoons of salt, which was also in there. Um, and white pepper, a quarter of a teaspoon of white pepper. Um, so all we do then is literally add on the lid, the lid, insert the measuring jug into the bowl, and then we're going to mix it for 20 seconds at speed four. Um, so I was just going to do that now. It's so easy. A lot of those are um, store cupboard ingredients. Um, just so easy to kind of throw together and make a delicious tasting dip which is going to accompany these oat cakes really nicely. Um, and great to have as, a, as something that you can quickly throw together if you've got a few people wanting a little bit of a 
um, something to nibble alongside a drink or whatever um, they might need. So if we just have a look at that now, it wants a little bit of a mixing around um, with, the, with the spatula. So just to show you that uh, lovely, oh, I can't really see that very well. Uh, there you go, lovely looking dip, um, which I'll get all Yeah, that it's up. really nice, actually. It smells delicious, actually. Uh, really yeah, nice. I bet it's really tasty. There's so many dips on Cookie Doo. There's a whole collection on dips and spreads. You can have lots of fun to make, yeah. you know, your own smoked mackerel trout pâtés, smoked salmon yeah. pâtés, obviously the chicken liver pâtés, and then all the things that you can do with chickpeas and, and beans as well. And not so, to yeah, mention lots. hummus, which is another absolute yeah. staple in this house and all the varieties of that that you can get, Moroccan and beetroot hummus and all sorts. Um, so loads yeah. and loads of tasty options. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, right, let's shoot back to me really quickly, um, uh, Claire, if you will. Now, I completely forgot that I'd made my bread earlier um, as I was watching everybody else do there. So here's my rolls. Can you see how beautifully they've risen? They're lovely and perky. Um, and actually, I haven't preheated my oven, so I can't put them in right now, but I just wanted to show you um, what the rolls look like. So they're going to go in a, a, a about 180 degree oven for about 15 minutes. Um, and so, uh, hopefully when my oven's at temperature, um, I will just put them straight in. But I wanted so, to show you, oh, there's somebody trying to ask a question. Uh, we just want to do the sous vide really quickly because um, I just wanted to show you what comes in the uh, bundle offer this month. So if I come over here, here's my sous vide. This is the, sous, the Thermomix sous vide machine, which you get. So um, you've got uh, the options to just uh, seal with it, to vacuum seal, um, and then you can control the moisture level as well. And there's a special setting for marinating, uh, bottle, bottling, all that. I, don't, I haven't looked at this one yet, but um, you can sort of marinate uh, various meats um, or, or bottle um, or prepare sort of vegetables and things for bottling in here as well. So this is the, this is the machine, really, really easy to use. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sous vide some scrambled eggs um, and I did I had a little dummy run earlier so this was my sous vide scrambled egg because you see how beautifully soft and squidgy that is so you, we're never going to have dry crumbly horrible scrambled eggs anymore when you sous vide. So what you need to do if I just move you back over here I've got my egg mixture um, which I just mix around with some cream um, and some milk and some melted butter. Uh, again, all the steps for this are on a guided recipe on Cookie Do, but just for speed this evening, I'm not gonna go through it. Then one of the things um, that you get with your, um, uh, with your vacuum sealer is a roll that looks like this. And the idea of this, a plastic roll, so you, we do give you some bags as well. So there's a whole load of bags that come with it. And here we go, a, lovely booklet which I haven't opened yet and then some more bags and the blade cover comes with it as well because you do really need a blade cover to sous vide with and some tongs as well so that you don't um, burn your fingers when you're getting it out of the water. But I'm going to show you what to do with this um, this roll because it's quite useful you only need to use the amount of plastic um, that you really need rather than using a bigger bag um, and, and throwing extra away. So I'm, I, this isn't, there's not much mixture in here. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit of this roll off. So something like this. My scissors, and you can see it's like a sleeve. So it's open top and bottom. So what I'm gonna do is come over to my vacuum sealer and I'm going to use the vacuum sealer to just to seal using the, the sealing part without the vacuum bit. I'm just gonna seal the bottom of the bag. So I'm just gonna put, put my bag in, press seal, like that. And can you see, it's just shut down, it's locked itself down, like a pair of sort of jaws on the, the plastic bag and it's just gonna seal the bottom of it, okay? So hopefully it should not take too long. So they were on a demo. So there we go, we've got a nice seal across the bottom. So now we've got a fillable bag. That so means you only need to cut off what you need to use. So there's no sort of wastage. Right, so with this plastic bag, what I'm now going to do is I'm gonna sit it. I found it was easier to sit it in a, in a jug like this. 
And then I'm going to pour my scrambled egg mixture into it. Let's hope I get it in. Like that. Pour that in. Scrape out. Oops, got all my cream and butter stuck around the side. So here it is in the bag. And then I'm going to come back over. Now they do say you probably need about a, an eight centimetre clearance between the, the top, the level of the food and the top of the bag. I've got a little bit more than that. Um, and then I'm just gonna slot it back into my machine. And this time I'm going to press vacuum seal. So it's gonna clamp down again. Can you see now, because it, this is quite liquid, I just picked up a little tip um, the other week and you can hang it over the bottom, uh, sort of over the side of your um, work surface. So all of your ingredients sit at the bottom of the bag and not near the sealing part because you don't want any liquid at the top, otherwise it won't seal properly. So there we go. So it's just dropped out. Lucky I was there to catch it. And now I've got it sealed. I've got it vacuum sealed. So I've got no air. So what that means now is it's going to be completely able to be submerged in some water. So how easy was this? And vacuum seal is really good if you want to preserve food. So you can, you can vacuum seal up your fruit and vegetables, they'll stay fresh for longer. You can um, preserve food, cooked food as well. So now what I'm going to do, in fact, I'm gonna go over to my other machine, this side, is I just brought my water up to 100 degrees, well, to 80 degrees, because I'm gonna cook this um, scrambled egg mixture at 80 degrees. So when you sous vide, basically what sous vide means is cooking of food inside a vacuum sealed pouch in a constant temperature water bath. So what that means is that the food inside is cooked to perfection. You can't overcook it or undercook it. If I just, so I've used my kettle to bring my kettle function, to bring my water up to the right temperature. I'm just gonna go back in to find the scrambled egg recipe, uh, a bit like that. And then I'm just gonna go now through the recipe, you'll see, um, as we go through it, it wanted you to put the butter in and melt it, add the cream, etc. So it mixes it all round. And then you um, bring the water up to temperature. And now I am going to, now it's asking on this recipe to put the simmering basket in. So you can sous vide without a blade cover by using the simmering basket. But I've got my blade cover in here. So if you can see in there, I don't know if you can see the blade cover at the bottom which just covers off the blade. So I'm not gonna bother using the simmering basket, but if you're only doing a small quantity and you don't have a blade cover, you can just drop your sous vide bags into the simmering basket and pop them in the water like that. So I, all I'm going to do is going to pop that straight in. See that in the water? And that's gonna be completely submerged in that water. Then I'm gonna put the lid on. Click on next and it's just gonna cook for 10 minutes. So it's only gonna reach 80 degrees. So that means the scrambled egg is gonna be absolutely perfectly cooked at the end of that cooking time. So the other thing I've got in here that I'm going to sous vide, and I won't do this, I know we're running out of time, so I'm not going to, I want to, um, Sarah to do the yogurt. I'm not going to uh, show you this in the vacuum sealer at all, but I've got some figs in here, which I've marinated in about, about whoopsie, gosh. I think all our tripods are going wrong, but it's obviously overuse, Michaela. I've marinated that in some honey, so a balsamic glaze, um, some star anise, and some uh, cinnamon and ginger. And that, again, I'm going to vacuum seal it up using the vac sealer in exactly the same way. And I'm going to drop it in to a water bath. And I've got my friend out for this. So somebody asked what this, this um, device is. This is called a Thermomix friend. It's the companion device of Thermomix. It's got very limited functionality, um, but it, it, so it just heats and stirs, but it's absolutely brilliant for increasing capacity. Or if your Thermomixes are in use doing something else and you just need that heating function, then you can use one of these. Um, so here I would, would set this for um, whatever the, the temperature is. Here's my recipe. So with the figs, I'm going to cook it at um, 144, which is about 65 degrees for 40 minutes. So all I would do is program on here, 60, 40 minutes, 65 degrees. You can see it's at 65 degrees. And then, uh, and I don't have a blade cover in there. So I will put my figs into the simmering basket 
um, drop them in here and then put them in there. And then my friend is going to sous vide away. So that would mean if I only had a Thermomix and a, and a friend, that it would remove whatever you're doing from your main Thermomix over to the friend, freeing up your main Thermomix to get on with something else. That's mm. the whole point of it. It enables you to actually cook more, do more with your main Thermomix while it's getting on with the slightly long-winded processes of either slow cooking or stirring and heating something. Um, so that was my whirlwind guide to so, Susie. Lindsay, can, can we come back to me just to do the final steps? Yes. So that, yeah. is that okay? Yes, Sorry. So okay, I know yeah. we've got to go to Cutty, but so um, my lovely casserole has cooked, look, and I'm keeping it warm in these brilliant thermo, uh, thermo insulated thermo servers. Um, so I'll put that in there. But I just wanted to show this to show you how one pot this machine is. So it's telling me to clean the machine, which it was already done. It cleaned itself. Then it's asking me to put in those steamed carrots. So, you know, earlier on, I steamed some carrots. Look, so I'm just going to put them in there. Now, you know, when you're traveling on the road, the whole thing around your payload and carrying as little as possible is really important. So this is just another piece of equipment you don't need. Look, I'm going to put this lid on. I'm going to press next. And for three seconds, this is going to mash up my carrot. Right, so press next. And it's asking me to transfer to the bowl. I won't hang around to, so just let me show you, mashed carrot. Fabulous. Didn't need a masher for it. Now, I'll, is it, are we going over to Cutty? I'm going to do the mashed potatoes the same, in the same way, and then at the end, we'll show you what we've done. So I think it's over to Cutty, isn't it? I just wanted to quickly show you what I've done um, with the Nutella. Um, earlier, I fancied making, actually, I'm quite fancy making a brioche that I just quite like the um, sort of creative stuff. And so I made some brioche dough earlier. I just rolled out, um, cut it into four, and then rolled it all out into circles. I place one layer down, um, put some Nutella on it, next layer, Nutella, next layer, Nutella, and then the next layer. Then I cut it into half, half, half again, so I've got 18 pieces. And then, this is, uh, then you just get two pieces, and you just twist them both outwards twice. Again, the whole machine talks you through this. And this is the last bit. And then when I, what I can do with this now, because it's half proved already, the dough is, um, and I actually just put it in the fridge to not allow it to prove anymore. Now pop that as it is into the freezer, because I've got friends coming around in a couple of weeks. So I reckon that's quite impressive for a breakfast. Um, so I can pop it in the freezer. And then when you bring it out of the freezer, you just um, put it into a cold oven and, and then turn the oven up to your 180. And whilst that keeps on, Whilst that oven is um, warming up, it is proving, doing your second proof for your very flash uh, hazelnut brioche star. Anyway, there we go. That will go in the freezer later. Um, now I've done the yogurt. Um, I heated up the milk earlier. I've done the vanilla, um, creamy vanilla yogurt on here recipe. Um, I heated up the milk and I let that um, cool down. And now, and to find out what temperature your milk is at, you go back to the home screen and the middle dial at the top tells you what the temperature is in there at the time. So when it says cool down to 40 degrees, you can always tell by putting the bowl back on, going to your home screen, it will tell you. So then um, I've had a vanilla pod in there. So I've taken the vanilla pod out and pop it into the, um, this is some live yogurt that I'd already had in the fridge that I made last week. Um, it's just 55 grams of live yogurt. Um, I put the vanilla pod in, which was melting and, uh, you know, cooking in there with the milk. I put the, the um, seeds into there, gave it a stir. And now what I'm going to do is just mix a little bit of the cold milk, combine it with the yogurt. Add the yogurt mix, and then I add this yogurt mixture back into the bowl. It's just a bit easier to pour then. Don't stop walking my dogs. Okay. And then 50 grams of um, 
So that the milk powder, and it's weighing it out as we go, but I hope it's about right. Yep, yeah, oh, spot on. And then it says 40 grams of caster sugar, optional. This is where you can completely control your sugar content. I put about um, 15 grams in here because the kids will be eating it so they can have a little bit of sugar. So that's a little bit of sugar. And then all it will do, I need a little bit of measuring cup for that. Five seconds. That is just going to mix all the um, yogurt mixture up. And then all I'm going to do is pour the yogurt mixture into the, um, into the jars. And then if we're going to speed through a bit, then I put the jars into the Varoma. And I put some water into. Uh, I clean them, clean the mixing bowl. Put some water and lemon into the bowl put the jars into the Varoma with their lids on. I will do this, but I have a bit pushed for time. Um, and we put the lid on with a clean mixing bowl. Yeah, divide it into eight glasses. Prince mixing bowl, 250 grams of the water. I have a look at them in the bowl. So a bit, do a bit of a blue pizza moment. We have to put a bit of, um, lemon mixture in as well, a bit of fresh lemon juice. That just stops if you're heating um, stuff for over four hours, you know, constantly, it's just to stop any rusting. I don't think it would rust, but it's just, we'll do what it tells us. Then obviously these are full yogurt pots, which I should do in a second. I put the lid on where the lids went away. Here we go. And I'll put, Obviously, the full yogurt pots with the lids on, um, Roma dish, blow the lid on, and that will literally um, ferment the yogurt overnight at 70 degrees um, for 10 hours. So, usually, yeah, I put it on overnight, you can put it on the day, whatever, but it's only at 70 degrees, so it's not really, really hot. You don't have to worry about it too much being on all night. Then in the morning, you have lovely creamy yogurt, and it, um, it costs where a Muller Corner costs about 60p for a Muller Corner. Um, this works out about one pound fifty for two and a half kilogram ki kilograms. Is that right of um, of yogurt? So um, yeah, a lot lot cheaper. And again, you can use um, you can use a jar left over of this one to start making your next uh, batch of yogurts. That's oh, brilliant! It. Thanks. So yeah, I mean I. I, I pretty much saved the entire monthly repayment on the three-year plan uh, of a Thermomix just on making yogurt alone on one thing. It's incredible. My my kids, four kids, seven yogurts a week, yogurt every day. That's 28 pots a week. So um, I now make all of my yogurt in my Thermomix. I do a big batch once a week, sometimes twice a week, depending on how greedy they are. Um, and I save over £10 a week just on making yogurt alone. So that's over £40 a month. Uh, versus the cost of buying it. Of course, I don't have all the plastic as well that I'm not contributing to landfill um, because uh, all, all I all, all I use is a, is a carton of milk um, at the end of the day and not uh, tens of yogurt pots. So again, you've got a clean conscience um, as well. So let me just show you the scrambled egg is sort of finished. It wants me to put it back in. There we go. So I've got my scrambled egg there. I should be using my tongs to pull it out. What it wants me to do is, um, if I just click on next, it'll say, using tongs, carefully remove the bags from the simmering basket, place onto the kitchen bench. Then it wants you to break, use one of our spatulas. So the spatula comes with the machine, all the accessories apart from the blade cover do come with the machine. And the blade cover actually at the moment, I shouldn't say machine, I'm gonna say Thermomix, um, the blade cover, we've just redesigned the blade cover. So it's gonna give you a peeling function. So you're gonna be able to peel all your root veg um, and ginger and things like that. So we've got a peeling mode. So this is the only machine really that gets better with age. Um, whereas other machines go out of date, the Thermomix is constantly being updated um, and being given new functionality through software updates. So I've just, I've just um, cut that or pushed that down with a, a spatula. Then I'm gonna, it's asking me to put it back in. So in, back in it goes. 
So it's just a different way of doing a scrambled egg and ensuring they're absolutely beautifully soft and creamy. And then it's just gonna cook at 80 degrees for another nine minutes. So um, if you go over 82 degrees, you will get those of you that have um, tried to make custard and failed and it's turned into sort of slightly scrambled egg. Uh, that is because you've reached a, a temperature greater than 82 degrees. So at 82 degrees, you get proper, proper scrambled egg. So this is a way of just ensuring that the egg stays beautifully soft and creamy um, without going too far. And so it's not all coagulated and congealed. Um, so you get a lovely creamy soft result. Okay, so I think that's the cooking part. Thankfully, Doug, I think this has probably been our most ambitious demo to date. Uh, we aren't gonna keep you too much longer. There are just a couple of things I want to say. I want to show, I want everybody to show their dishes because um, that's kind of the point of it. Hopefully you've got a good idea of just the whole versatility that we've done this evening. So we've done everything from a drink to a main meal. We've done a bit of breakfast. We've done some bread. We've done yogurt. We've done a store cover filler. We've done Nutella. Sarah's even pushed the boat out and done a whole sort of beautiful brioche star, which could be a breakfast or a brunch dish. Um, and then we've got the oat cakes um, and the smoked dip. So a huge amount of things that you can do with this Thermomix. One appliance really does do it all. Um, if you uh, still want to see it in action, there is nothing we like better. So firsthand, there is nothing we like better as advisors than bringing our machines to you and cooking with you and a group of friends. Um, at the moment, if you host a demo with us, um, we have got these beautiful um, silicon baking mats, which are very, very useful, which we are giving away for free. If you host a demo and invite three or four friends, we'll come to our house with our machines you provide the ingredients and we will cook you and your friends a beautiful meal. Well, in fact, we'll get you to participate in doing that because that is part of the fun of it. And then you get to sit down and enjoy it at the end. So not only do you get, a, you, well, you get the choice actually this month, you can either have a free one of these, you can have a 50 pound off voucher towards the Thermomix brand, um, or you can have a 50 pound off voucher towards the um, back ceiling bundle I believe as well so if you do want to host a demo it is a great it is great fun and you will get a lovely little gift as a thank you for helping us share our passion for Thermomix um, so don't forget our interest-free offer is on right up until the end of October so the 31st of October so you've got your one two and three years interest free you've got your CV bundle including your blade cover that's a great deal because the blade cover is the only, currently the only optional accessory. Everything else that you've seen as part of this demo. So the simmering basket, the spatula, the Baroma. Um, we've also got a splatter guard as well. That all comes with the Thermomix. So there is nothing extra to buy. Um, so have we, uh, I've just seen something go in the chat. No, it's not a question. Um, Don't I'm forget, hoping, we've got the exciting bit. Yes, we've Lindsay. got two exciting. Yes, we have got two exciting <laughs> things. I'm coming on to them. I'm trying to talk really, really quickly. Um, I'm not great under pressure, um, but I hope we've. Um, we, we're going to have some new owners amongst you. Um, uh, come and join our community and that is what is really special about Thermomix it is a community it's not just like when you buy a food processor or a bread machine or whatever it is and you take it back from the, the shop and you get it home you plug it in and you're on your own with Thermomix you've got me or uh, any one of my team or even Claire if you're very unlucky from another team I'm only joking Claire I'll have to get my own back some, somehow but you've got all of us to hand uh, helping you get the most out of your machine um, and not only have you got us but you've got also got access to all the other Thermomix owners um, that are part of the Thermomix Voice Customer Group on Facebook which is a really really brilliant resource for inspiration support and help so if you've got a question you put it on there and somebody will be back to you within a minute and so you never get bored of cooking with the Thermomix do you there's that constant source of support and inspiration and, um, uh, and we don't like hearing people that are stuck in a recipe rut because you just, if you're stuck in a rut um, with a Thermomix, then you're doing something wrong because you've got 70,000 recipes uh, available at the touch of your fingertip. And you've also got all your advisors and fellow customers to inspire you. Um, so that is the end of the cooking this evening. I hope my bread will come out the oven in a minute. My, I tell you what, I put my figs in and they taste, they, they smell and taste absolutely delicious. But two very exciting things. Firstly, if you want a chance to win a Thermomix um, this month, um, Bulwark have very kindly donated a Thermomix in support of the charity of one of my team members, Nicola, 
who I don't believe is on the call this evening. Nicola runs um, a charity for underprivileged families in Nairobi. Um, and um, Woolwork have donated a Thermomix. Oh, here she is. Here she is. Sorry. Here she is. <laughs> so, Nicola, do you want to just introduce your charity and say a couple of words about it? Um, oh, wait a minute. Sorry, I've just removed it. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, happily. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Um, yeah, just very, I could go on a very long time about it, but a friend and I set up a charity um, after working in Kenya over the last couple of years, which basically gets street children in the slums in Nairobi into schools and with a lot of support behind them for emotional and physical damage that's previously happened. So um, we're raising money through through all sorts of events and you can look up marafikitrust.org to look at more of what by what we do. But th as, as Lindsay said, Warwick have kindly donated a Thermomix to Raffle and I'm sure um, the link will go on here um in due course or i can put it up but um well, if we'll, anybody we'll would like to just we'll try send, and win a thermix we'll, i'll send it out to everybody that's registered um for the okay, session brilliant. as well yeah. thank yeah. you very much the chart, just to the enter the charts to win a thermix to either have a second yeah. one have a first one or give away to a friend brilliant so just for 10 pounds you could win and a ten pounds, yeah. 10 pounds yeah it's going to be drawn at breaking. the end of october yeah 10 pounds drawn at the end of october um, I'm going to enter. I might enter a few times, actually. Um, <laughs> Please do. You can I have two more can you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you all. Uh, brilliant. And then the last thing to say is that we have got a draw to win a Weber barbecue. Yeah, so we have got to so say from the events that we did over the summer, um, we put everybody's names in a hat that left very kindly left us their details and said they were interested in finding out more about Thermomix. Um, so everybody's names have gone into a hat and we finally, whilst we're, when we're all together, yep. decided this would be the time to do it. So I'm going to hand over to Michaela, who is going to do the live draw. We've got big Weber barbecue to so give away. Again, guys. more work have very generously donated. Can us. you see this wheel? So we have over 100, let me have a look, I think it's yep. 130 odd names in here, gone to all the lovely people that registered. So when I click that button... It is going to randomly select you. So here we go. I'm going to click, click, and it's spinning the wheel. Ooh. Send out those vibes if you want to win. I hope there are someone online tonight. It is Trudy Barnett. Trudy's not online tonight. Who's Trudy Barnett? <laughs> I don't know. I don't recognise that name at all, but that's very exciting. I'm sure she'll be delighted when we tell her that she's won a barbecue. There we go. Just in time for the winter. <laughs> Fabulous. So, uh, brilliant. There you go. Thank you, Lindsay. Pleasure. Right. So thank you everybody for joining us. We haven't done, we haven't, we've only lost sort of nine people along the way this evening because we have gone on a little bit longer. So we do appreciate you sticking with us. Um, here are my instantly, I've just pulled my bread rolls out of the oven. So there we go. I've got some lovely rolls there ready for packed lunches or to eat actually with my scrambled egg for tea um, after this. I'm gonna to have to have a little midnight feast, I think. Um, Michaela, did you show your finished dish? I don't think you did, did you? Or did, did we do that? No, here we go. If you wanna spotlight it, I have taken photographs of it. So here we go, guys. Um, so I'm sorry, it's um, spotlighting me there, Claire. I'll do it if she's gone, wait a minute. Uh, hold on one second. Where am I? Spotlight. Yeah, I've, I've there we go. So, so yeah. there we go. Oh no, cut is on. No. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go, guys. So look, a lovely, delicious autumn warming uh, stew here with some. This is the carrots that have been chopped up. The mash. I use potato and sweet potato, and it's all done in this one machine. Look at that. I've done all that. In one machine and it's cleaned itself in between thank you very much okay brilliant and then if we just come back to Sue, very very just come out of the oven yeah. so i can pop them back in oh yes so yeah. let's go over to sue and see the oat cakes yeah i'm definitely going to make some of these uh, so. So. So there. Uh, there we go yeah, so these have just um, finished. I'm going to pop them back in the oven, though, like I said, to finish off crisping up. Um, 
but they look absolutely lovely. And the beauty of these, if you're going away off in your motorhome, you can make a batch beforehand, pop them in a, in a um, sealed container, and they will keep um, fresh and lovely for snacks on the go, whenever you like. Um, oh, fantastic. The there. there you go. And um, Sarah, did you get around to finishing off your yogurts while we were talking? Are they in there? Yeah, yeah. all in here. Oh yeah, lovely, look at that. How easy yeah, it is to make your yogurt, brilliant. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna got, you're gonna have a lovely breakfast tomorrow <laughs> with your yeah. and stuff. And my Nutella. And, and, also, oh, um, and we can't forget Marie with her sticky toffee pudding. I can just hear a little voice oh. in my ear. Let's have a look at the sticky toffee pudding and the toffee sauce. And it would be beautifully okay. presented if I know and Marie. Oh. So, because, well, why wouldn't you when you've got a Thermomix? I've also made a beautiful thick custard to go with it as well. Seven whole minutes of my life there. Oh, I'm okay. coming over to Marie. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at that. Look at that. Fresh vanilla custard. What more could you want? Yeah. I'm grabbing my spoon. See you all later. <laughs> <laughs> exactly fantastic well i feel like a bit like the poor relative now with my scrambled egg and bread offering mm -hmm. <laughs> but here, yeah here's my scrambled egg it's just it's very hot actually but can you see how lovely and oh soft ah, and squidgy <laughs> i do have asbestos fingers but there are limits so mm. like 80 degrees out of a water bath but beautiful soft and squidgy and i can't actually wait to have that on a fresh buttered roll um, afterwards and enjoy the fruits. I would say the fruits of my labor, but it actually wasn't that labor intensive. Hopefully we showed you how very, very easy it is to cook with the Thermomix and lots of lovely food that you can easily be making at home, whether you love cooking already or hate it. So thank you for joining us. Um, if you want to pop in the chat, if you are really interested in becoming an owner, it'd be lovely to hear from you. So pop your details in the chat um, if you want one of the, the, envi the advice that you know or if, if you want one of us to get in touch with, with you and we can get your um, Thermomix ordered. If you order now, you would have delivery by early next week. So you will be cooking up all of these delights um, within a few days. So thank you very much for joining us this evening. We hope you really enjoyed it and we'd love to welcome lots more of you to our fantastic community of owners. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Mm. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye bye. Oh, pleasure. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Mm. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Thank <laughs> <laughs> We've all got them. Don't worry. Yeah, don't worry, <laughs> Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week, Charlotte. Yeah, bye. Bye, bye, bye. Marie. See you bye. soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just putting everybody in the waiting. Is it just us now? Uh, really? There we go. And, uh, Stop recording, Lindsay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, stop. <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, very good for you.